April showers brings May flowers. No, nope, not in Alberta. Oof, I went out there this morning. It's like 20 centimeters. It's weird all over Canada. They're manipulating the weather, causing people to stay inside more and more. They like to spray that shit just to screw us up. <laughs> I'm home for another day. I didn't work yesterday and I'm not working today. Not in that shit. I can't drive in that crap. No. But I had some wonderful fellowship yesterday. Got together with Seth and uh, Brett and uh, a few others. So it was great. Um, appeared on screen in a live chat. I don't usually do it anymore, but it's nice to have that once in a while. <coughs> so, thank you for joining me on this Wednesday hump day. We've got um, this next article is called Divine Allotment. Now, as far as allotment is concerned, God casts a lot right at the beginning of creation. Casts a lot for the whole creation. We ended up winning the divine lottery. So, the divine allotment is a beautiful thing. Um, <clears throat> as far as being a member of the body of Christ. God already casts a lot for us. And we're in it, whether we like it or not. <laughs> the whole point is, you should love it. Being a member of the body of Christ, we're going through the potter's wheel now and being formed and made according to his will, being set and placed. Um, <clears throat> this is awesome stuff. So, the law takes all determination out of the hands of man and puts it into the hands of God. All life, all history is due to divine allotment. Even if man does try, does try to force his wild will into the perfect plans of the deity, it can only play the part assigned to it in his intention. Apart from the awards for faithful service, all, almost all the treasures and honors which are to be divided among God's creatures during the conclusion of the eons, which is now impending, will be distributed by lot. Man's will will be ignored. Nothing will be left to chance. God alone will place everyone in the position which he determined for him at the beginning, him or her, <clears throat> or whatever creature he created will be placed where it's supposed to be placed. Um, in Israel, the lot was an honored institution given by Yahweh, far from leaving anything to luck, quote unquote, or to fortuity of fate. It evaded the mistakes of men and put all into the hands of the deity where it belongs. <clears throat> it was a device to avoid conflict with the will of Yahweh, where his way had not been specifically revealed. It was the method he gave his people of distributing land and of selecting men according to his intention without his immediate intervention. Okay. Our rich and glorious allotment is not an inheritance due to any merit or whatever of our own. <clears throat> it is a choice of God but it is given to us graciously from the hand and heart of the all-sufficient. We often read of the lot in the revered authorized version, but never of allotting or of the allotment. There it is altered to inherit or inheritance, although it is clearly accomplished by lot. Let us expunge the word words heir inherit or inheritance from the pages of God's revelation. They are false and misleading. <coughs> when used of the deity, they suggest that man can take over that which belongs inherently to God. They give color to the mistaken idea that we can own anything apart from him. They give us a title to property of which we are only tenants. They have no equivalence in the divine vocabulary. In their place, we should usually use some variation of the word lot. In a few cases, it should be changed to tenant, 
as it is in the Hebrew. Until we do this, our thoughts in this sphere will be cloudy and confused, and we will not be able to enjoy our own allotment as we should. God has not made us his heirs, but has granted us a rich and glorious part in his grand program, not to have and to hold apart from him, but to enjoy in fellowship with him. On the other hand, it is a cause for profound thankfulness that our popular version almost always translates Lot correctly. In the Hebrew, <clears throat> G-U-R-L is always Lot. In Greek, Kleros is Lot seven times. K-L-E-R-O-S in part twice, Acts 1, 17, 25. Inheritance twice, Acts 26, 18, Colossians 1, 12. And heritage once, 1 Peter 5.3. This is due to the fact that it is so often used in connection with casting the lot. They could not well cast an inheritance. The lots were usually small objects, such as pebbles, which were marked so as to be identified. They, they were cast into a pouch and withdrawn unwittingly so that man's choice was eliminated. To the ungodly, it seemed an appeal to chance, a wild gamble. To the pious Israelite, it was Yahweh's method of making known his will. The first occurrence of the word lot clearly sets forth its significance. Leviticus 16, 18, 8 through 10. Two hairy goats were taken. One was to be offered for a sin offering, but the other was to be left alive and sent into the wilderness. The question arose. Which was to be the goat of departure? Authorized version, scapegoat. Which was to be sacrificed? This same problem came up again and again. It could hardly be settled once for all by a written revelation, such as was given to decide the other matters connected with the ritual. Neither could Yahweh leave it to the priests or the other peoples, for they themselves were sinners and would sin even if offering a sin offering. Yahweh did not give them the ritual in order that they should be independent of him. He arranged it so that they had to refer many things to him, and so to realize his living interest in their affairs at all times. <clears throat> so the lots were cast into a, the bosom pouch and drawn out in order to determine the fate of each of the two goats. You might reason, why make so much fuss about so mean a matter? They were only animals, not men. Both would die in due time. What difference could it possibly make whether it was one or the other? In either case, the picture presented by the type would be the same. Would it not? By no means. It was of the very essence of this typical presentation that it be personally and particularly in harmony with the will of God. The great antitype, Jesus Christ, was offered up according to the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God. Acts 2.23 He left no details to the mind of man, however trivial and tiny they may seem to us. And so it is with our allotment. Let us thank God that he has left no gleam of its glory to us to determine. But all is in line with his will. Okay. It is a lot that is cast forth in the bosom. Yet from Yahweh is its every judgment. Proverbs 16.33 Okay, we will continue on tomorrow. So have a wonderful Wednesday. We will talk to you later.